It's raining, so the sidewalks are going to be wet, right? Yep, raining is sufficient to guarantee wet sidewalks. The sidewalks are wet, so it must be raining, right? No, raining is sufficient to guarantee wet sidewalks, but it's not necessary. Maybe instead the sprinklers just went off. I can't get into the fair without a ticket, right? Yep. For a customer, having a ticket is a necessary condition for admission to the fair. I've got my ticket, so I can get into the fair, right? No. For a customer, having a ticket is a necessary, but not a sufficient condition for getting in. The fair also has to be open, for example. Let's take a closer look at what we mean by necessary and sufficient conditions. So let's look at sufficient conditions first. What does it mean for P to be a sufficient condition for Q? In our example, what does it mean to say that raining is sufficient to guarantee wet sidewalks? What it has to mean is that whenever P, raining, is true, Q, wet sidewalks, must also be true. That's exactly what the Boolean operator implies does. So, for example, we might have that raining implies wet sidewalks. Or more generally, P implies Q. P is sufficient to guarantee Q. If P is true, so is Q. This is clear from the truth table definition of implies. P implies Q is true if and only if, whenever P is true, Q must also be true. It's false otherwise. Okay, to summarize, the definition of P is sufficient for Q is that P implies Q. Now, with a clear definition of what a sufficient condition is, let's return to the sidewalks example briefly. The sidewalks are dry, so it's not raining, right? Yes. Recall that we already know that raining is a sufficient condition for wet sidewalks. In other words, raining implies wet sidewalks. Well then, its contrapositive must also be true. So we have that not wet sidewalks implies not raining. Again, using our definition of a sufficient condition, we have that not wet, which we will write as dry, a sidewalk is a sufficient condition for not raining. What about necessary conditions? What does it mean to say that P is necessary for Q? Or in our example, that having a ticket is necessary for admission. If P is necessary for Q, then it can never be the case that Q is true, but P isn't. Put another way, without P, Q is false. Or we could say Q only if P. We can write this as a logical expression, not P implies not Q. Or, in the case of our example, no ticket implies no admission. Let's build the truth table for this. To make it easy, we'll add columns for not P and not Q. And then we add a final column for not P implies not Q. Let's double check that this is the logical relationship we're looking for. We want an expression that's false just in the case in which Q is true, but P isn't. We've got that. The expression should be true in all other cases. And we've got that too. Now what we'd really like is a simpler name for this relationship. It's common to use only if. Okay, to summarize, the definition of P is necessary for Q is not P implies not Q. And now, by the way, we can exploit the contrapositive identity again. Jen got into the fair, so she must have had a ticket, right? Yes. Getting into the fair is sufficient to show that Jen had a ticket. Let's see why that's so. Recall that we already know that having a ticket is necessary for admission. In other words, no ticket implies no admission. We can take the contrapositive of that, apply double negation, and get that admission implies ticket. Now, using the definition of sufficient condition, we have that Jen's admission is sufficient, but not necessary, to conclude that she had a ticket. 
Now we can restate the definition of necessary conditions based on what we just saw using the contrapositive rule. One definition of P is necessary for Q is that not P implies not Q. And we now know that an equivalent one is Q implies P. Let's look again at the relationship that we've just observed between necessary and sufficient conditions. We have that admission implies ticket. So, admission is sufficient for ticket. But we also have that ticket is necessary for admission. So we have heard about sufficient and necessary conditions. Sometimes people get those backwards. I've tried to come up with a rule um, that makes it easy to remember. And here's how we go. I call it the SIN rule. Suppose we have statement P implying statement Q, right? In that case, P is sufficient condition for Q, since P implies Q. Alternatively, we could say Q is necessary for P, since Q follows from P. Can we remember that in a nice way? How about this? The sufficient condition, called here P, implies the necessary condition called here Q. Sufficient implies necessary. Think of this as the sin rule. Finally, let's consider what it would mean if P were both a sufficient and a necessary condition for Q. If P is a sufficient condition for Q, we have that P implies Q, or if P, then Q, or Q if P. If P is a necessary condition for Q, we have Q only if P. If P is both a necessary and sufficient condition for Q, we'll say Q if and only if, or as a shortcut, Q I F F P. But notice one other thing. If P is necessary for Q, then Q implies P. We also still have that if P is sufficient for Q, then P implies Q. So suppose we have the AND of these two expressions. Notice that this is exactly what it means for P and Q to be equivalent. Whenever we write a definition, we're claiming that two things are equivalent. So we often write definitions like this, Q if and only if P. For example, an integer n is even if and only if it's divisible by 2.